Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, hematologist in Claremont, California. Today, we will discuss essential thrombocythemia. It's a blood disease where the bone marrow produces too many platelets. The platelet is a clotting cell. When there is a cut or injury, they go there and uh, gather together, forming a platelet plug to stop bleeding. So when their numbers are too low, you can bleed very easily, but when the numbers are too high, it also can cause blood clots, resulting in stroke or acute heart attack. We will discuss more in detail, and thank you so much for watching. Essential thrombocythemia is also called as essential thrombocytosis. It's one of the myeloproliferative neoplasm, which encompasses chronic myeloid leukemia, polycythemia vera, uh, primary uh, myelofibrosis, and essential thrombocythemia. There is an excessive clonal platelet production, which increases the risk of thrombosis and hemorrhage. The median age of diagnosis is 60 years, and it's more common in the women. It's caused by an acquired genetic mutation of JAK2, calreticulin, and the MPL genes. Please uh, look at this drawing. Normally, the platelet production is initiated by TPO binding its receptors on the surface of stem cells or megakaryocyte or even uh, progenitor cells. And then the JAK2 in the cytoplasm recognize it and they initiate the signal transduction by STAT pathway. Then the uh, gene transcription increases leading to proliferation of megakaryocytes and the increased platelet production. But the, uh, uh, in essential thrombocythemia, there is a JAK2 mutation. And this JAK2 mutation can initiate this signal transduction and the gene transcription without TPO's uh, stimulation. So in the absence of TPO, uh, megakaryocytes continues to uh, proliferate, increasing the production of platelets. In 60 to 65% of essential thrombocythemia patients have a JAK2 mutation about 20-25% calreticulin mutation, and the 3% have a MPL mutation. Some percentage of patients can have another gene mutations. Hereditary essential thrombocythemia caused by thrombopoietin gene mutation is very rare. About one-third of patients have no symptoms when diagnosed. There are three kinds of symptoms associated with the vasomotor dysfunction, thrombosis, and the hemorrhage. The vasomotor symptoms occurring in 15 to 40 percent of patients include the headache, dizziness, syncope, erythromelalgia, amaurosis, fugax. The erythromelalgia is the uh, uh, painful swelling, red red uh, fingers or hands. Amaurosis, fugax is transient loss of vision. Unlike polycythemia vera, itching is rare. Thrombosis, thrombosis occurs in 20% of patients, which include stroke, coronary artery insufficiencies like angina, myocardial infarction, deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, digital ischemia. There are risk factors for thrombosis, older age, age over 60, history of thrombosis, uh, increased white counts, and the uh, positive JAK2 uh, V617 mutation, and uh, cardiovascular risk factors such as smoking, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. Hemorrhages occurs in 10% of patients, mostly when the platelet is about, counts is above 1 million, when the acquired von Willebrand fact, uh, disease can develop. It includes the uh, GI bleeding, bladder, kidney, kidney hemorrhage skin or eye brain hemorrhage. About 50% of pregnancies uh, 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 wind up as a pregnancy loss during the first uh, trimester. About 40% of patients have a splenomegaly, big spleen, and 20% with enlarged liver. In laboratory tests, you expect the platelet counts over 450,000 per microliter and occasional mild leukocytosis. You may see mild iron deficiency when the patients have occult bleeding somewhere. Pseudo-hyperkalemia, falsely high potassium level, is kind of an interesting phenomenon. Uh, 
The potassium is released from platelets in the blood clots in the specimen container, falsely raising its level by 0.15 milliequivalents per liter per 100,000 uh, platelet elevation. High uric acid may be uh, seen from the uh, rapid cell turnover. Because uh, some patients with a chronic myeloid leukemia presents with a high platelet counts more so than uh, uh, high white blood cell counts, the, the chronic myeloid leukemia test, which is the uh, blood fish for BCR, ABL fusion gene, has to be done. Blood or bone marrow a test for mutation analysis for JAK2, calreticulin, and MPL, of course. If the above gene mutation is negative, and you still suspect the essential thrombocytemia, other gene mutation tests for ASXL1 or EZH2, TET2, etc. Uh, has to be done. Because iron deficiency can cause reactive thrombocytosis, uh, we have to check the uh, serum iron and uh, fair ferritin level. In my experience, when you give iron treatment, uh, frequently, that platelet counts goes back down to normal. The bone marrow examination will show increased number of enlarged mature megakaryocytes with a hyperlobulated nuclei, as seen in this uh, drawing. The, uh, the enlarged megakaryocyte with the hyperlobulated uh, nucleus. Highly atypical megakaryocyte morphology is not characteristic of essential thermocytemia. And then let's look at the peripheral blood smear of one of my patients with essential thrombocytemia. Uh, she has platelet counts about 600,000. And uh, you can see the clumps of uh, platelets here. For diagnosis, there are four major criteria and the one minor criterion. Major criteria include that uh, include platelet counts over 400,000 per microliter. And the patients have abnormal bone marrow biopsy with an increased number of enlarged mature megakaryocytes. And the patients must not have other myeloproliferative neoplasms such as chronic myeloleukemia, polycythemia vera, primary myelofibrosis, or other myeloid uh, disease like a myelodysplastic syndrome. And the number four criteria is a demonstration of JAK2 calreticulin and MPL mutation. Minor criterions are kind of a miscellaneous clonal markers, a mutation of those miscellaneous genes, and uh, or or no identifiable causes of thrombocytosis like a, a iron deficiency or infection inflammation. For diagnosis, all four major criteria have to um, uh, be met, or first three criteria and the one minor criterion. Essential thrombocytemia is a not curable disease, but with appropriate treatment, alleviating symptoms and preventing thrombosis hemorrhages, patients can have a near normal lifespan. Treatment strategy depends on the risk factors. High risk patients have a history of thrombosis at any age and or old age over uh, 60 years. With the JAK2 uh, B617F mutation. Intermediate risk is uh, older patients without JAK2 mutation, no history of thrombosis. Low risk patients is a younger patients, uh, younger than 60 years. You can have a JAK2 mutation and uh, no history of thrombosis. Very low risk patients have a younger patients with a no JAK2 mutation and a no history of thrombosis. Low dose aspirin is very useful to relieve the vasomotor symptoms and to reduce the risk of arterial thrombosis. You give it once a day or twice a day. No aspirin is given when the platelet counts over 1 million because of high risk of bleeding. Those patients with a high platelet counts over 1 million can develop acquired von Willebrand disease, a bleeding disorder. Cytoreductive uh, therapy is done usually with the hydroxyurea to, to reduce the platelet counts less than 400,000. 
Interestingly, a recent study showed that younger patients aged less than 60 years do not benefit from cytoreductive therapy. But the one the playlist counts is over 1 million. And uh, if there is a uh, evidence of acquired von Willebrand disease, then you do the uh, cytoreductive therapy uh, even for younger patients. For high-risk patients who have a uh, history of thrombosis and or uh, older age and a positive jet tumor mutation, uh, hydroxyurea in combination with a low-dose aspirin is the treatment of choice. But in case of venous thrombosis history, then you add anticoagulation therapy with the uh, warfarin or uh, direct oral anticoagulant uh, like a Xeralto, Eloquis. But if the patients have a history of arterial thrombosis, you don't use the anticoagulation therapy, just use the hydroxyurea and the aspirin. For intermediate risk, uh, the older age, no history of thrombosis, no ejection mutation, just hydroxyurea and the low dose aspirin is the choice. For low risk patients or very low risk patients, we don't use the uh, uh, cytoreductive therapy with the hydroxyurea, just the low dose aspirin. For very low risk patients, you may not give anything, just ob observation. When the patients develop resistance or intolerance to hydroxyurea, then you have to use other drugs. The definition of resistance or intolerance is uh, by European Leukemia Net are uh, platelet counts over 600,000 after three months of 2 to 2.5 gram a day hydroxyurea therapy. Platelet counts over 400,000 combined with the uh, low white counts and uh, low uh, hemoglobin at any dose of hydroxyurea. Or leg ulcers or severe nuclear cutaneous ulcers and inflammation by hydroxyurea and the hydroxyurea-related fever. The treatment options include anagrelide, uh, which is as effective as hydroxyurea, but has more side effects, such as uh, post-essential uh, thrombosis fibrosis, or little more arterial and venous thrombosis, palpitation, dizziness, but there is no difference in transformation to acute leukemia, but less anemia or less neutropenia or less infection than hydroxyurea. Anagrelide uh, is combined with the hydroxyurea at the, uh, the lower dose uh, can be uh, useful. It's published in uh, many uh, 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 experts. Interferon, especially pegylated interferon alpha 2A is useful for uh, pregnant women, but uh, it can be used as a uh, second line therapy. It's used with the low dose aspirin. Platelet pheresis is to, to uh, drain the blood and to get rid of a lot of platelets and infuse back of the rest of uh, blood cells. It's used for life-threatening thrombosis like a stroke or pulmonary embolism or acute bleeding due to uh, acquired von Willebrand disease. The prognosis is pretty good. Unless patients have a comorbidity, most patients enjoy new normal lifespan with the appropriate treatment. But uh, rarely patients can, uh, the, the essential thrombocythemia can transform to acute myeloid leukemia or to the uh, post uh, uh, essential thrombocythemia from uh, fibrosis, which is similar to primary myeloid fibrosis, then the prognosis is, is become poor. Thank you for watching.